Lisa here, Creams on Greenway, and this is my 38th floss tube, believe it or not. Uh, time does go quickly. And today is Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. And um, here we are uh, together again to chat about stitching. And I've got a, a couple kind of new little categories. I'm not saying I'm gonna do them on every floss tube, but a few other things I thought I'd, I'd throw in there. I really like sharing um, new ideas. Um, Y'all know my style is prim. I know that's not everybody's style, but um, I do like to share new ideas, uh, which certainly can be carried over to different genres if you're more uh, kind of a, a cottage style decorator or bright colors or whatever that may be. So um, I'm hoping you might enjoy um, me showing you some new things too today. So um, first thing, I'm sorry, I have a little list. <laughs> I have a big list actually, uh, but I just don't wanna forget anything. Um, so one of the things I wanna start with is again, saying thank you to everybody who um, spends some time with me. I think it's, it's fabulous that you wanna sit down and uh, spend a little time with me. Um, I, I really appreciate all the comments. It's such a fun way to get to know you guys. Uh, one of the things I've, I've recently discovered um, don't get me wrong, I knew these things were out there, but I maybe rediscovered um, the joys of blogging. I have never blogged, but prior to Flosstube, I used to love reading other people's blogs. And then I really got out of it, um, you know, because I've been watching Flosstube. But um, I think I did mention this on my last video that um, I rediscovered um, Elma Allen's blog. Um, I believe it's called One Stitch at a Time, I think. And um, it's no longer active, but she still has it up there for people to watch or to read and enjoy. And um, I have to tell you, there's like tons of ideas on there as far as finishing, um, even little vignette type decorating type things. Um, there's one idea I will show you today that I incorporated um, as a kind of a decorator type thing. but. Uh, and it's really fun to read the blog and see when she was developing, her and Barb were developing certain patterns or quilts and, and how she announced they were, you know, she, she does a lot of the photography or all of the photography and how she, she set things up in her yard. And um, then, you know, she would show a little clip of the upcoming chart, which is now, you know, 15 years old, but it's so much fun. I find it so much fun probably because I'm a huge Blackbird fan, um, to kind of read through that. And honestly, I don't have a, a ton of time again to sit down and read blogs, but um, I'm maybe six months into it. So I've got a lot to go and I, I look forward to that too. When when I'm just, my mind is, is not focused enough to stitch, I will uh, sit down and open up her blog. And I'm sure there are a ton of other blogs out there. I used to follow bunches of them and um, honestly, I don't remember the names of them anymore, but I, I really would like to take the time to revisit them. I really would. Um, so that might be one of my goals in um, 2023, to revisit some blogs and share them with you uh, because there, there's lots of um, inspirational people out there um, who have blogged in the past and who are still blogging. So, um, so look forward to me bringing that up. But in the meantime, check out Elma Ellen's old blog. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it if you don't want to read it right from the beginning. Just click on a few and, and open it up. And she always has beautiful pictures. And um, her uh, posts are not very long, uh, maybe five, six paragraphs or so. So it's just a little fun snippet if you're a Blackbird fan. So I wanted to share that. Um, let's see. Um, my next thing, um, I don't think I've ever done before. I know Kitten Stitcher started this with her favorite things. And so I just wanted to share um, a favorite thing that I discovered maybe a year ago or so. And um, now I see it out there quite frequently. I really like, it's a food item. And I really like the taste of different spices. I like strong tastes. Um, always trying to look for things that are not heavy in calories, but sweet. <laughs> One of the things I do, I should mention, um, is I add almond extract to a lot of things because I love the taste of almond. Um, I love almonds um, and I do eat nuts, but I try to keep it at a minimum if I can, just because they're high, um, high in calories. But, but I love the taste and almond extract has no calories, but you get that great taste. 
One of the things that I add almond extract to is um, my vanilla protein shakes. Uh, if I make those, um, I'll put a little extract in there. Um, in the morning, I have oatmeal and I put a little extract in there to give it a little flavor. So, um, so I love things that have a little added flavor to it. And one of the things I discovered this past year, getting back to where I started, um, was ginger candies. Have you guys ever heard of them? Um, I, there's now a lot of different companies making them. Um, <laughs> the funny thing was the first time I discovered them, it was at a hardware store. Is that weird or what? Um, it was Ace Hardware, A-C-E. I don't know if Ace is around the country or just in New York State, but I happened to be checking out and it was near the checkout. You know, they put those little sweet things near the checkout so that you grab it <laughs> as you're checking out, you get it. Anyways, I discovered them there and um, very tasty. So um, the other day I was doing a little Christmas shopping at Marshall's. Again, don't know if this store is around the country or not. Uh, it's the type of store have, that has a lot of this and that, uh, things that were uh, probably overstocks. Um, they have a lot of that type of stuff, designer stuff, cheaper, that kind of thing. Anyways, at the checkout, they had ginger candies. And um, this, is, this one actually has a little added lemon flavor. I really do just like the plain, uh, but my husband is a huge lemon fan. And so I picked this up for him for Christmas. So don't tell him. So here we are. Um, Ginger candies. Uh, again, there's many, many brands. This one says Gem Gem. Um, I can't remember the name of the other brand I had a couple months ago I had found, but um, these are extremely tasty. They, they give you a little sweet, but also a little spicy with the ginger, and they are 15 calories each. So you can't go wrong for 15 calories. You could probably even have a couple. So um, ginger candies, something I'm all into, I guess. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Just thought I'd share. Okay, what else is on my list? Uh, I put on my list as my next thing, oldies but goodies. Now y'all know that I love Prim and I love estate sales particularly. Sometimes we have a few kind of antique malls around here that I'll stop at, not on any regular basis, but occasionally. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I have my sister who is awesome at finding old things. And so these next two items I'm going to show you are things that my sister found that she thought I would like that I think are pretty cool. And um, I'm also seeking people's ideas. Uh, I love coming up with ideas on how to utilize these items. So I'm not only going to show you, but I'm going to throw it out there and say, what would you do with this item um, to put it in kind of as a decorator item? I always want to hook it up with stitching somehow. So, you know, let me know. Let me know where she found these things i don't know but check this out i don't know if it's particularly old or not but i just loved the graphics on it i love the graphics on it um it must have been a spaghetti container it has a little hole in it it's tin it's tin it says luce di Celo spaghetti i am not italian i'm probably butchering that um it says quality since 1885 um, it does have a sticker on the bottom, so I can't imagine this is super old. It says the Tin Box Company of America, <laughs> made in China, of course. But I just thought I love the colors. I am super big into yellows and reds. Um, these are the colors of my kitchen. I, I have filmed for my kitchen before, and you've seen um, the yellows and reds. And even this wallpaper has a lot of yellow hints and some reds in there. It's just my favorite, my favorite color combination. So I thought this was cool. One of the things I was thinking of is is making a an oval kind of pin cushion and putting it on the top with some some cool like hat pin type things um, and just um, setting it in my kitchen as a decorator item. Um, that was my thought. But if you have any other ideas, let me know. Pretty cool. And the second thing I want to show you is actually an old basket. And I wonder what it was originally used for because I've never really seen this type this type of basket, maybe I'm not saying it right, uh, the way it closes. So um, if you know what it was originally used for, please let me know. And if you have any stitchy ideas, please let me know. So here it is. It's a square basket. So look at this, baby. It's got a little handle here, so I guess you could hold it. But the cool thing is, is this rod, and was it original to the basket or added to the basket? I have no idea. But it has these little little rattan hooky things. So I'm thinking it was original to the basket, but then again, it's bigger than the basket. I'm not sure. You let me know if you have one of these 
in your attic. You used to see one at your grandma or grandpa's house. And uh, let me know, there is some writing on there in green. You can hardly see it. I don't know what it says. I can't really tell if it was somebody's name. Um, but basically you, you pull this out and that's how the basket opens. So there it is. There's the inside of the basket. Um, it's in pretty decent condition. It's missing some rattan here, but these are the holes for the, the loopy things. Um, but generally, I think it's in pretty good condition. Um, you know, I guess I was thinking you could display it this way and, and put some things inside as a display. Um, certainly, you could mount something here inside or something on the front. Um, you could, I suppose, maybe wrap something around it, although you have your handle here, so maybe that would impede that. But um, I love the color of it. It, you know, it's kind of, kind of a, um, I like this deep brownish color, I guess. Uh, that's kind of my, my jam. And then of course we got some red going on here. So, so I don't know. It, it's kind of cool, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, if anybody knows what, what the original intent of it was, or if anybody has one just like it, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear. So, so an oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> an oldie, but a goodie. Okay. Now, um, my next oldie, but a goodie, um, actually is, is a dyeing project that I did um, and something you could do at home. Um, this was some soft and easy hem tape by Wrights that I picked up at um, Joanne Fabrics. I'm sure they sell it at a lot of um, sewing places. I don't know. Um, that's where I got it. Of course, they had it on sale. I don't know, buy three, get three free or something like that. And this is just kind of a... Um, what is that? Like a creamy color, I guess. Off-white, cream, whatever you want to say. And um, I took I took that and I soaked it for about, I'm going to say I soaked it for three to four days in some of my husband's leftover coffee. <laughs> I don't drink coffee. He makes a very small pot in the morning and usually half of it gets left there. So one morning I poured it into a mug and I stuffed, crunched it up and stuffed this in there. Um, and let it sit for about three days. And it gave it a very nice prim look. I thought it was kind of neat. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, I don't do a ton of coffee dyeing. Um, I basically just uh, put it in the oven for a few minutes at like 225 for it to dry and then I wrapped it on here. But um, I didn't know if, if putting it in the oven would, does that heat set the coffee? Or if this would get wet again, would it come off? Um, I guess, obviously I'm not gonna get it wet again, but I guess my thought is um, if I use it in a finish, you know, I don't want it to stain the finish. Like I don't want the coffee to come off and stain the finish. Um, I wondered if maybe I should iron it and would that further heat set it? I don't know, maybe it doesn't really matter. But anyways, um, I thought it was kind of a cool project. You could do it with um, probably any kind of ribbon. I don't know. But uh, this was one, as I said, that I got at uh, Joanne Fabrics called Soft and Easy Hem Tape. And um, I like the texture of it. I've used it before in some of my projects. So um, keep your eyes peeled for a sale. And uh, they do have all different colors, um, but a lot of them are kind of not in my color scheme because they're kind of brights. So I go with blacks, uh, whites or creams, and then, um, you know, coffee dye them and see how we go. So there you go. Kind of an an oldie made to look old. It is new, but made to look old. So that's an oldie, but a goodie, something you can do um, at home. So I think that's all. I'm just looking around. Uh, oh no, a couple more things. Um, this is more oldie, but goodie decorator ideas. Um, one is an old spool. If you have any of these old spools, um, all I did was um, tore some fabric and wrapped it around and then I uh, just took one of those big um, safety pins and a few buttons and stuck it on there. And I find that a uh, very cute uh, prim decorator item which oft which can be changed out uh, because of course you can switch fabrics to whatever type of fabric you want. So there you go on that. And then another idea, if you do have buttons, um, get an old canning jar, uh, throw a little fabric on there and uh, set it out this is an awesome, awesome way to, uh, you know, kind of as a storage solution and decorator combo. 
And this was the other one. This is a juice bottle. I think um, years ago they used to sell juice and these kind of things. I got this at a, I don't know, whatever sale uh, for probably a buck or something like that. And I, I put some wooden spools in there uh, with a lot of colors. Um, these spools are, are pretty old, so the the threads, um, I have used them. The threads are probably fine, but I like the colors. I feel like they've kind of dampened down, become a little prim. So, uh, and then I just, again, I just wrap, wrap some fabric around it. But another cute storage slash decorator item. So, print. Let's go print. All right. I think that's all my oldies but goodies. Uh, so what's next on my list? Um, next is Stitchy Kindness. Um, number one, um, Stitchy Kindness, I want to mention is my friend Yvette, who is down in Virginia. Yvette is coming to my retreat. Woohoo! Uh, I'm so excited to see her in October. And um, there is a box downstairs under my Christmas tree from Yvette. I don't know what's in it yet um, because I'm holding off and opening it on Christmas Day. But thank you, Yvette. That is so sweet of you. Um, you are are just the sweetest gal, the sweetest gal. So thank you, thank you so much. And on my next uh, floss tube, I will show you what's in that box sitting under the Christmas tree. Um, second thing is that I did win a giveaway through Jen's Stitching Niche. Um, if you guys don't watch her, head over there. Uh, she also, she always shows uh, beautiful projects. And um, I ended up winning Witch Hat Pin Cushion. Um, which I thought was super cute. And quite honestly, again, probably not in my um, my uh, wheelhouse as far as things to stitch, but I have this in mind for somebody else who I think it might be in their wheelhouse to stitch. So I may end up passing this to somebody else. So um, be ready on that, somebody else. And I want to thank one of my... Um, one of my subscribers, um, her name is Jeanette, and um, she contacted me and asked if I would like some wool patterns. And I was like, sure, let's build up the wool stash. Woohoo! Um, so this came from Jeanette, and I will show you the cute little patterns she sent along. Here's one from Primitive Gatherings called May Basket Welcome Banner. Look at how cute is that. I love it. Um, next, oops, I don't wanna drop these. Um, next is by Lily Anna Stitches. I've never heard of her before. I don't know if she's still out there, but these are little winter banners. Now, a lot of these, you don't necessarily have to make a banner. You could make a pillow. Um, you could link some together to make a table runner. Um, I'm sure there's, I could probably stitch it and put it on my basket. Um, lots of things you could do. I really love that little prim lady snowman. Oh gosh, I think she's adorable. Um, she's definitely going to be on my list 100%. And next is another Primitive ga Gatherings called From the Bittersweet Vine. Um, you know, this reminds me of a pattern uh, that my friend Michelle from Under the Woolen Willow, I know she has an autumn book and uh, this reminds me of that with the crow and the pumpkin and all the leaves. Um, it's so fallish. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, next, another uh, fall uh, item. This is from the Woolen Needle. Uh, we always hear about the Woolen Needle from uh, Lori Textilist and Lisa Kindred Stitcher. This is called Allie's Pumpkin Patch. And how cute are they? Look at that. Holy moly. Cutest little buttons, cutest little buttons. Um, next is by a designer by the name of Holly and Ivy. Um, looks like they're out of Wisconsin. And this is called Autumn Splendor. Look at how pretty this is. I thought this was very prim. Very, very prim. I like that. I like that. Very sparse kind of little tree with the leaves and then kind of little partial pennies around it. I, I really like that one too. Um, this really caught my attention. Um, uh, by the woolen, another one by the woolen needle called Counting on You. Look at those sheep lined up. I don't know, Lori, is this one of the ones you've bought from the woolen needle? Um, and have you stitched it already? I feel like I might have seen this on your channel. Let me know, Lori. Let me know. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. 
Next one is by Lily Anna Stitches, and this is called Lavender Bliss. This is more of a kind of a geometric pattern, but some pretty colors. Very, very cute. Very cute. Um, next is another Lily Anna Stitches, and this is called Autumn Reflection. Again, pretty autumn colors. This one's a little harder to see because it's a little bit dark, um, but super cute. Love the basket in the middle. Um, might just take that basket right out of there and do that just separately, maybe as a, a pin pillow or something. Super cute, super cute. And I have to say, my sister said she loved this one. It's called Bloom and Minds Have to Have. <laughs> Smiley. Look at this guy. My sister said she loved it. Um, not necessarily super prim, but maybe I'll do it for her for winter time. How cute is that? So gosh, Jeanette, thank you so much for all these awesome patterns. That was just so sweet of you. My goodness, people are just so generous, so generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there we go on that. All right, so my next, uh, let's see what's next on the hit list here. Uh, next is my FFOs. Now, I know I mentioned it, I believe it was on my last floss tube or maybe the floss tube before, that I had this idea that I'd gotten from Lori Holt uh, or inspired by Lori Holt that I wanted to do um, some stitchy strawberries um, and on each put my mother-in-law's initials and year of birth and then her mom, her mom's mom, and her mom's mom's mom. So there you go. And I invited my three sister-in-laws to each stitch one and I did one. So we have four strawberries. I took these out of the Blackbird Design book book in Friendship's I can't talk holy guacamole in Friendship's way, and here it is. Uh, I believe this book is still on the market. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so definitely go out and get it. There are some beautiful patterns in here, and beautiful ideas on displaying the strawberries as well as finishing the strawberries. I'll be honest with you, I didn't go with any of the finishing ideas. I did not go with the called for fabrics, but I did go for the called for threads. So first off, the fabric that we all used was 32 count Bees Knees Linen by Seraphim. And that is true to color right there. Very true to color. I love this. Again, this is that very warm brown. I tend to gravitate to warms rather than cools as far as color schemes go. And this is a very, very warm brown. I love the modeling. So if you can ever get yourself hold of Bees Knees by Seraphim, grab it, grab it. And um, this was a 32 count. Um, this is all I have left of it. Uh, but I'm gonna be keeping my eyes peeled for this fabric. I would love to get some of this in 40 count. I think this would make an awesome sampler particularly like a red and green type sampler, I think those colors would pop on this baby. So yeah, if you ever see Bees Knees by Seraphim, you just grab that up and put it right in your stash because you will definitely use it in the future. So that was the fabric we used. And oh, just as another quick idea, quickie, quickie. Uh, when I mailed these off, I, I mailed a little kit to them and I mailed the threads and the fabric and the pattern. And um, I thought to myself, well, I wanna make some cute little thread cards. And so I did, and I wanted to show you the idea. They all sent them back to me. <laughs> they could have kept them, but I already told you, I mentioned last time, they do know how to cross stitch, but they're not stitchers. Anyways, um, just to throw out an idea, I took these large cards. Actually, these were gifted to me by Lori Textilist. However, just a couple weeks ago, I was at my local Dollar Tree and I saw them there. Of course, they're not a dollar, they're a dollar 25 now, but these are very handy for paper crafting. All you paper crafters out there, um, I noticed um, that Anna Bates, um, Stitch Roadies, Quilt Roadies, I've been a fan of hers for a long time, she's recently gotten into paper crafts. So Anna, I don't think she watches me, but <laughs> Anna, if you do watch me, Dollar Tree, large uh, playing cards, awesome for paper crafts. So I left that side as is, but on this side, I mounted an old piece of music paper. And that's because I've told you before, my daughter's in music and she's got lots of old music books that I use for my paper crafting. 
And of course I primed it up with some Tim Holtz ink and I put some holes in it and I put the numbers of the DMC and then I put their names on. So this was for my sister-in-law Eileen and you can see the um, numbers of the DMC I put on there and I just hung the threads and it was a cute, very easy way to um, send the threads so that they don't get like super, um, super tangled. So, so there was one and um, here was the other one. This one I did for my sister-in-law Jean and I cut, cut the holes a little differently. Oops, things are slipping off my, my lap here. Um, but here we are on this one and, um, this was, this was a two of hearts. So there we go on that. And, but you can make these for your own projects and put them in your project bag. Um, they're quick and easy and, uh, I really enjoy doing it. The other, the other thought I had with these is I'm the kind of person that's, mm, my kids would say cheap. Um, so I, I save my threads. If I use a, a little portion of it or even half of it, I save the other half and reuse it. So one of the things I thought of is this could just be a card for your saved threads as you're doing your project. Um, that way I take the time to put it back on the original hanger where my threads are, uh, the thread card or whatever it's called, floss card. Um, but I thought just for those little extras, this would be kind of fun to put all the numbers and holes and then just use it for the extras. So then you can go back and just grab it off of there. Um, just throwing an idea out there. But this was for my sister-in-law, Amy. And uh, this was a um, uh, two of diamonds. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. Um, that's how I did that. So again, just another little, little idea I'm uh, throwing out there. Of course, I have to trim everything up and make it, you know, put all the ink on and all that jazz, but just an idea. So getting back to the strawberries, um, what I had um, in my stash, because I wanted to also not just display the strawberries um, as I gifted it to her, but I wanted to make clear um, the genealogy. Um, so I had this, uh, this frame in my stash and I really should take this off, but it was from the Goodwill. Uh, for $2.99 and chances are it probably was a percentage off that too. Uh, but I thought it was really cool and I bought it years ago with the intentions of using it. And look at now I'm using it. See all those things in our stash? They get used. They get used in like maybe five, six, eight years, but they get used. So here it is. I, I love the patina to it. I love the color. You know, this is in my color scheme. And so uh, what we did is uh, we put the, the names. Uh, the first one is my Mother-in-law, Mary, uh, born in 1940, and then her mom, Marguerite, uh, born in 1911. And in fact, my daughter is named after uh, <laughs> Marguerite. And then uh, another Mary, born in 1890, and another Mary, born in 1864. And I stitched that very last Mary from 1864, which is my mother-in-law's great-great-grandmother and, uh, and my kid's great-great-great-grandmother. So cool, how cool is that? And um, so this uh, obviously is a picture frame that can uh, set on a table. And then in front of that, I will show you, I am going to uh, gift her a plate that I got at an estate sale with the strawberries displayed on the plate. So it'll be like a total little vignette. Okay, so let me show you. I have it right here, it's been sitting here the whole time. And here are the little strawberries on a little plate. Um, so I will show you them one by one. Um, as I said, the bee's knees, I kept with the same colors. I realized the browns blend in a little bit, but again, it's my aesthetic. I love that prim, almost ghosty look to them sometimes. Um, and uh, for the tops, as you can see, I used um, some very old uh, lace that's been, this has been naturally yellowed. I didn't yellow this. Um, I do want to attempt taking some white lace and yellowing it with onion skins. When I do my onion skin dyeing, um, I keep intending to do that. And I've onion skin dyed paper two or three times now, and I always forget to drop some, some lace in there at the end and just see if it, if it yellows it and how close it looks to like real yellowing. <laughs> I'll let you know at some point, a little experiment. But um, I decided to do my tops a little differently than I normally do. And I'll show you some that the way I kind of normally do it, but um, you know, I like to branch out, try something new. 
And you know, I'm a huge fan of buttons. Well, you, you've seen this button jar. I probably have about six of these jars or more full of buttons. Thanks to my sister and uh, my nephew who keeps their eyes peeled for buttons for me. So um, this time I decided to use buttons. So I'm gonna show them one by one and I'll show you um, how I did the tops of them. Um, again, just to give you some ideas if you're into that prim aesthetic like I am. So um, let me start with um, Mary Blanche from 1864, my mother-in-law's great-great-grandmother, and this was the one I stitched. And in the book, let me show you which one this is in the book. In this book, it's actually Mildred's, uh, Mildred's Strawberry. And um, here is how they show it here. It has a butterfly on it, if you can see. And they kind of did a sparkly top to it, which is very, very cute. And I forget what the called for. The called for fabric was Meadow Rue by Lakeside Linens. And I don't have that in it. You can see the called for was a little bit more of a, a grayish. So the colors did show up very nicely. But um, I was just in love with this bee's knees and I just went for it. So um, so here's Mary Blanche from 1864. Her last, um, uh-oh. Oh my gosh, you know what? I think I goofed this up. Oh, do 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 do. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm just re. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is happening live, right? <laughs> I just realized. I think my. I think my husband put these names on here using their, I think what he did is he used their um, maiden names. However, we did not stitch their maiden names. So definitely not changing the stitching. I am gonna to have to talk to my husband about these names because I think he gave me um, their maiden names and their um, married names, and I think we stitched the married names on here. Just realizing that. Thank goodness I did this floss too before Christmas. Holy guacamole. Yeah, this will be easy enough to change. We just did this on the computer. Okay. Okay. So anyways, um, this is her great-great-grandmother. I forget what her last name is, but it starts with an M, not a B. <laughs> that was her, her maiden name. Uh, but anyways, here it is, um, all stitched up. And you can see the two initials are there. You see the 1864 on the top and uh, the little butterfly. Uh, this did have little specialty stitches in the, in the circles of the butterfly is Smyrna's. And it is called for Smyrna's. I didn't change them uh, from my list to Smyrna's. It is called for Smyrna's. So, um, so here we are. And then what I did on the top with this one is I stacked buttons. I stacked buttons, um, which I think that can came out super cute. Um, I have to tell you, the other thing I spent a lot of time like deciding was if I was gonna line the linen. Now I've made a lot of strawberries with, without any interfacing or lining of any sort. Um, and then I did a couple with um, SF 101, and then I did a couple with Heat and Bond to give it more, more stability or stiffness. Um, I like the stiffness. This one is Heat and Bond. I like the stiffness. However, the top, as you can see, has a lot of like creases to it when you when you fold it. Um, so there's positives and positives and negatives to everything. But um, but this does have a lot of lot of stiffness to it. These are stuffed with uh, walnut shells. Can I tell you? I had bought a big bag of, of walnut shells, which is lizard litter, several years ago up at a pet shop locally before COVID. Now. I called about four pet shops in the area. Nobody had any. Um, so I ended up ordering it on Amazon, which it did come in a couple days. And the price, believe it or not, the price was the same as it would have been at the pet shop because they had it on their website, but they just didn't have any um, in stock. So um, so the price was the same, which I'm surprised because I feel like a lot of times Amazon jacks their price up just a little bit to cover that shipping that you get free as an Amazon Prime member. But Anyways, I ended up getting it on Amazon. So if anybody's looking for crushed walnut shells, um, go to Amazon. They have them there. Um, and it gives it a real firm. I mean, this is super firm. It gives it a real firm. And on the top, I just put, um, as I'm closing it, to hold the shells in there, I put just a little bit of fiber fill um, just to hold the shells in and cinch it closed. 
Um, so there you go. Uh, if you have a ton of buttons at home, hey, it's an idea. It's it's very prim. Gotta like the aesthetic, but um, you can use the buttons as a stem. I just stacked them up. These are just stacked up and glued. And once I got the stack was dry, then I kind of just glued it on the top. Um, so I, I kind of like it. I think I, I may use it again in the future. So um, there you go. Stack some stack some buttons up there. All right, number one, number one. Okay, next one in the lineup is Mary Mauer. However, um, it says MC because, as I said, we gotta we gotta change the <laughs> the paperwork there. Um, anyways, this one was in the book. Let me just find it so you know which one this was stitched. This was Leona's strawberry in the book. So this is Leona's strawberry. And I'm trying not to show the pattern, but here is the, here is Leona's. They kind of used a sparkly, I don't know, ribbon's probably not the right word, sparkly trim of some sort and made it into a bow on the top, which is, again, super cute. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but what I did is I used a big fat button. It's kind of a navy bluish color, big fat button on the top. And, um, and there we are. Here we are, stitching is really cute, 1911. And again, in the center there are little Smyrna's. So super cute, big, fat, um, navy blue button on the top there. Okay, next in the lineup, oops. Well, this should have been next in the lineup. I guess I goofed that up a little bit. Uh, this is Marguerite, um, 1890. She probably should have been next in the lineup, but um, but here we are. Uh, she was she was Barb's strawberry, Barb's strawberry, and here it is here. And they used kind of like a brownish ribbon that they pinned down. I often wonder though if you put those pins in, I think they would just fall out. But I don't know. I don't know if they used glue to put them in. I don't know because I feel like if I just used a regular pin, that it would fall out. But maybe not. Anyways, this one, I did another stack. Here's some more colors. That one's a big fat green one with a red one on top. Uh, that button looks almost like Devo hats from that band back in the 80s. Um, but here it is, cute as can be, cute as can be. I love it, I love it. So just to give you a look here. These are pretty big. Um, these are as big as my hand. They're pretty, pretty big strawberries. Um, that's because I did 32 count. I think the book calls for 36 count, but that's what I had in my stash. So that's what I use. So they are a little bigger. And then the last one is actually my mother-in-law's who was born in, um, 1940. And, um, here it is. The, oh, this one I should show you. What was it here in the book? It was JJ's strawberry and the book was JJ's strawberry. And they did use a big button. That is actually a large button they put on the top. Um, and they took a, put a little hanger thing on the top of it. So um, here is my mother-in-law's um, strawberry. And this one, I put a big brown button. It's kind of a cool one. I can put this down. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a domed button. Um, pretty neat. I like the brown. So you can see it kind of back here. So there you go. And then, as I said, I, this was just a, a plate I'd gotten at an estate sale and I just set them on here. Of course, we've got to flip them, but all right. Well, there you go. That's one finished project that will be gifted for Christmas after we change, after we change the, the names on there. Glad I discovered it. Okay. So that was that. Um, oh, you know what? I just realized one thing of stitchy kindness I forgot to mention earlier that I did want to mention is um, uh, Cindy C. Stitches. Um, thank you, Cindy, for the cute little prim card. I absolutely love it. I love this brand, Papyrus. Don't they make cute cards, Cindy? Awesome, awesome. And she sent me a beautiful 150 DMC, a gorgeous prim red. Um, love it. We'll definitely be using this Cindy, okay? This is a definite because um, I'm, I have plans for the new year for the color red. So again, thanks, Cindy. Uh, next item, what's on my list? Uh, okay. Oh, two more strawberries. Yes, I actually did those four and I did another two strawberries. Actually did these first um, kind of as a, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
<laughs> prototype, prototype, prototype. Um, and I decided to use this old fabric that I had in my stash. I dare say six, eight years, but it always eventually gets used. Things eventually get used. And I bought it in an old barn sale uh, locally. I think I bought, I think it was $2. Actually, I think the price tag's still on there, two bucks. And it almost appeared like it could have been an old tablecloth, but I just love the pattern of it. It had holes in it. It looked super vintage, super vintage. And I was like, for two bucks, this is up my alley. I have a ton of it, I have a ton of it. And I thought to myself, you know, let me make a prototype for these strawberries. Basically, I wanted to try out the different interfacings. And um, so this one I did with SF101, I can tell because it's, it's a little more flexible. Uh, and I did like that. It, you know, it's definite possibility. I like that. This one I did with a ribbon on top and a button, um, but I still used the old, um, I used the old uh, lace. But isn't this, isn't this fabric cool? It's just super vintagey. I just, I don't know. I'm just attracted to it. Um, it doesn't have any red to it, but I like that creamy color. And it's, I think it's either black or navy blue and then some light blue and a little bit of yellow in there. Um, I just get a kick out of this fabric. I think it's just the coolest thing. And as I said, I, this is the ribbon that I showed you um, from Joanne Fabrics. And I used that on top and then inside I just, oh, can, I, can you see it? Inside I just put a button in there. Uh, but uh, I think it came out super cute. Um, it's a little fluffy on the top little fluffy on the top. Um, and then I did a second one. This is the one I did with the um, heat and bond, which is a little stiffer. Uh, I used a, another ribbon that my sister got me uh, from an estate sale and put a little button in the center. Uh, so a little fluffy on the top. But um, this one I had showed on Instagram. I used my, I used my um, oh, wedding china that I hardly ever use. And I used a lot of like creamy colored buttons as a display. And this is the display. This is the display I was talking about previously that I got the idea from the Blackbird um, Alma's website. She showed um, uh, like China. I think that she probably got it, estate sales or something, that she glued onto glassware. Now, I didn't glue anything because this is my good China, but um, she glued it onto glassware and she made different levels with, and different size plates and different shapes of glassware. I think she used like um, Sunday cups and she used um, candlesticks uh, and I forgot what votive holders that, you know, she maybe got at Dollar Tree. You can get a lot of glassware at Dollar Tree. And the plates, I think she probably got at estate sales and such. Uh, but, you know, sky's the limit, sky's the limit. But she, it was funny because she had them grouped in threes. I remember Brenda saying, everything comes in threes. She had them grouped at threes and she had them at different levels, like like a, a low level, a medium level, and a high level. And they looked so cute together. And so that's where I kind of got this idea. I had um, my old Sunday cups that have been around forever and a day. And um, I set it this way. And I set this on top like this and makes it look like a cake stand. And... Um, Put the strawberries and all the buttons on top and what a cute display and if you had three of them at three different levels yeah super cute super cute so thank you alma for the awesome idea that everybody is going to use to display their smalls now obviously you don't have to put strawberries on here you can put pin pillows any type of small needle books a little display of needle books you could have a bigger plate you know with with a whole bunch of stuff uh, throw some buttons on there, um, and wowza. Wowza. This deserves a wowza. Mm -mm. Deserves a wowza. So so there you go. Uh, yeah, super cool. Super cool. I have to say, when I put it on my Instagram, I think some people thought this was an actual, like, cake stand. And I'm like, no, no, this, this is just a, a old Sunday cup and, and plate. So there you go. I'm going to set it back over here so y'all can see it kind of in the background. But there you go, ideas, ideas. Okay, you probably have noticed that I got my woolly tree out. It was, I think it was two years ago um, that Gail and I went up to Old Tattered Flag and took a class on making woolly tree. 
and um, I used some of my vintage glass ornaments to put on there and my um, my mushrooms I made from Maggie Benonymi's um, patterns. Let me show you up a little closer. You can get this pattern through Maggie Benonymi and or Blackberry Primitives I know carries this mushroom. Um, it's actually a pattern that has two different style mushrooms. Um, this mushroom, believe it or not, was actually made by Maggie Benonymi because I visited her shop when I went to Quilter Station a couple years ago and um, she had these for sale there. So this one is actually made by her, but in her book, um, or pattern, I shouldn't say it's a book, it's a pattern. Um, she has both of those styles uh, in the pattern. So uh, if you're big into mushrooms, which I love them and I think they're very prim, and I've noticed in the um, fashion world, my daughter who was 18, we had gone shopping and they have, they're now into these little like vests we used to wear um, back when I was probably in middle school. <laughs> And one of them had mushrooms all over it. And she just thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. So mushrooms are coming back in style. So there you go. Make some mushrooms. Um, as I said, go on the Blackberry Primitives website. You can pick up the pattern. I, I think it's only like 10 bucks, so it's not bad. And use scraps. I mean, you don't need much. This is actually um, linen. So you all have scraps of linen that you've cut off. Uh, that's all you need. The top is done with um, a little bit of velveteen, but you could definitely use... Um, cotton fabric, you could use wool, or you could use another color linen. So just go for it. Use your scraps and make some cute stuff. Okay, uh, what else am I going to show you guys? What else am I going to show you guys? Um, speaking of Maggie Benonymi, oh boy, don't say it, Lisa. I have something that I made of Maggie's, and do I have it here with me? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think it's, I think it might be downstairs. Oh. Well, let me show you the, the other thing. I have two Maggie things that I made. This other item is a bigger item that I think I might have shown you before, but I finally finished all the applique on it. I don't do fancy applique. I don't do buttonhole stitch. Maggie um, uses uh, Coates & Clark Summer Brown Thread just regular cotton thread and whip stitches. So I finally finished all the whipping. Um, and it's out of her book, uh, Thistledown Moon. Um, this is an out of print book, but I got it on the secondary market. Um, I didn't pay astronomical. Uh, if you go out there and, and troll around, you can find things for sure. But this is called Flowers on the Windowsill Wool Mat. And here it is in the book, Flowers on a Windowsill. And um, my friend Gail helped me put this put this together. I think I mentioned that on my last floss tube or the one before. And so I finally finished uh, stitching it on. And, whoops. And I absolutely love how it came out. It looks absolutely adorable. And I think, I haven't 100% decided yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put a back on this. I think I'm gonna put a back on this uh, of some sort, something prim. We'll see. I, I don't know 100%. I, I have to be honest in saying I was kind of thinking about that, um, this material, because I told you I have a ton of it. I, I'm thinking about it, but it might be too bright. So I, I don't know on that, but I'm gonna put a backing on it of some sort. And then it could be used on a table. It could be used, I've had it had it on one of my chairs downstairs, just on the back of the chair, and it looks awesome. Um, if somebody wanted, they could put uh, a rod holder in it and hang it kind of on a rod. So there's lots of possibilities. And why do I say if someone wanted to? And the reason I say that is because I have made the decision that this piece is going to be part of our prim retreat. Uh, I've mentioned this multiple times. It is the uh, Primitive Needle Arts Primer um, in Rochester, New York, uh, put on by myself and Michelle from Under the Woolen Willow, as well as Hobby House. And um, we are going to be doing a um, kind of a basket raffle type thing where you buy some tickets and put them in the little jars in front of each item. And each of the designers are gonna have an item there or a couple or something like that. 
And I know Hobby House is going to be donating some things. I know that Hobby House Woolworks is going to be donating some things. And, um, and there might be other surprises there. And the proceeds for this raffle is going to go to um, the Rochester Ronald McDonald House. If you don't know what that is, it is a place where families can stay when their children are ill in the hospital. Um, I've had several of my patients' families stay there, and so it's a charity near and dear to my heart. And so all the money raised from the raffle will go to them. And this is going to be one of the prizes. Yep, this is going to be one of the prizes. And um, I thought it was apropos since it was a Maggie Mononymy piece, and Maggie is going to be there teaching. Woo! -hoo! So, um, so yeah, if you're interested in winning this please come to the retreat and you will have the opportunity to win this. Um, as I said, I think I'm going to put a backing on it and then it will be very um, versatile. You can use it for multiple things. So uh, I'm just glad I have the, the stitching done and um, I have a little time to think about what type of backing I'm going to put on there. Uh, but here it is. Here it is. All complete. And what is going to be my next wool project? I have something in mind, but I'm not going to reveal quite yet because it's it's kind of a, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's one of my ideas that I'm going to use a Maggie pattern for. So um, I'll let you know if it works out. Not everything I do works out. Some things are a bust. So I generally don't show the busts. <laughs> But I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So happy to finish that. I have another Maggie item, um, but I don't have it right here. But I'm going to show it to you. I, I might have to show it at the end, but I will. And I lost my list. So um, next item. <laughs> Blackbird. You guys know I'm a Blackbird fan. And last time I chatted, I had shown you... I had shown you... I had shown you, I had shown you a Christmas book. And where did that Christmas book go? Oh gosh, cheapers luck creepers. Okay, all right. I'm gonna have to have you hang on a second because I don't have the book and then I can grab the Maggie thing. Hang tight, hang tight. Okay guys, I'm back. I know it was only a second for you. Okay, I'm gonna reverse just a little bit and go back to the second Maggie thing that I did find and I found the book. So um, this is the same book, same book, Thistle Down Moon, and I did something called an easy folded linen pocket. Um, she gives a couple different colorways. Of course, I just use what I have on hand and here's a few colorways. And as you can see, it's just a cute little flower. In hers, uh, she did partial um, fabric applique and partial wool applique. In mine, I just did wool only. Um, she also actually cut a buttonhole in hers where I used a stamp. So again, you know, when designers make things, just do your own, do your own take on it. Do what you have available. And that's kind of how I do things. What I have available, um, I use. So um, I love this little pocket. Um, certainly you could put lots of little things in the pocket or you can just display the pocket. But um, here is my take on the pocket. I actually used this, let me try to get up close. Um, this is linen. Um, it's not, I have stitched on this linen. It's not sold as a stitchy linen. Um, it's from Old Tattered Flag. She hand dyes these linens. Um, I have a bunch of different colors. I have a few different types of blues and grays, and I have a red one I haven't used yet. Um, and I love this brown one. Um, there's lots of splotches on it. Uh, I'll show you when I open it up. There's a big, huge splotch on it. But of course, I love that because it makes it look print. <laughs> so um, so anyways, this is all wool here. And um, this is a cool square button, uh, kind of a pearly one that I had in my stash that I put on there. Um, and as you can see, the, the pattern goes uh, goes to the back. Um, and so let me uh, open it up for you. So so I have a snap on there, as you can see, just made it easier. I, I really didn't have the heart to cut a hole in here to make the button a hole. It probably would have made it look more prim, but I didn't do that. I just put a snap and button on the top. So um, there's the big, the big splotch that makes it look super prim. But you can see this is the bottom of the... Um, of the flower uh, that goes over to the side uh, with the cool prim looking flower. So um, 
I thought it was cool. Again, I don't do buttonhole. I just whip it on. Um, to me, I like that look. Um, it features the pulls a little bit more. And for me, it's easier. I can do the buttonhole stitch, but I, yeah, just my style. Just my style. Do your own style. Do your own style. And then I used kind of a lighter green color wool um, on the inside, which I really liked. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, a little pocket that can be used for lots of cool little stitchy things. Uh, this was a quick, um, fairly quick project. Uh, I did use the machine to attach the wool and then you flip it inside out and kind of hand stitch it. Uh, but then when you fold it up, I just um, used hand stitching on the side. So, so it was relatively quick and uh, super cute. Uh, so there you go. There you go. That was the other Maggie I wanted to show you. All right. And Getting back to the Blackbird, I had it right here. <laughs> I forgot that I had it in this project bag. I don't know if I've ever shown this project bag. Maybe I have. Uh, this was made by uh, Faye Rigsby, the Carolina Stitcher. She does awesome project bags. This was something I had stitched for uh, a retreat I went to back in 2018 in Pennsylvania. And uh, so yeah, uh, Faye does does awesome work. This was one of her project bags. And so I had my my Christmas pattern that I had shown last time in there, uh, the bells on Christmas day. And if you remember, uh, my goal was to stitch three smalls. Um, I did get two of the three stitched, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, the first one was singing on its way and it was this one right here. Uh, it is not FFO'd, but it is stitched. And I used the called for fabric, which was Oaken uh, by Picture This Plus. I think they called for 36 count. I had 40 count. I did use all the called for threads, which was a mix of DMC and uh, hand dyed, depending on what I had. So um, here you go. I think that came out awesome. Um, I, again, love, 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 love the reds in there. I do kind of love how the pink, va I was going to say vase, but maybe it's a pot. I don't know. Played off the reds. I really like that. Uh, and the cool little house and the dove. So there you go. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you go on that. And um, then the second one I said I was going to stitch, which I did, was the Unbroken Song. And here's the picture of that. And again, uh, this is on Oaken, 40 count, <clears throat> with the called four threads. And so there you go. Cute as can be. Um, they put, they put initials on there, decided not to. I put Joy, J-O-Y, and 2022 on mine. Cute, cute, and more cute. And what is all this extra fabric? I think I've told you before, I put extra fabric on to fit on my cute snaps because I don't like to waste linen. So that's all that is. When I finish it, it'll be cut off. So, so that's that. I, I said I was going to get to the third one, but I didn't. Uh, the third one I did want to do was called Wild and Sweet, and it's a needle book. Um, I do have the, uh, I do have the fabric all cut and ready to go just waiting. So at some point I will get to it, uh, probably sometime in the new year, but it will be in with the, uh, book and the threads in this project bag. And one thing I do want to point out, um, that is on my someday list is this gorgeous sampler on the back. I've seen many, many people stitch it. Um, it's peace on earth and it is absolutely outstanding. Uh, so, um, Someday I will. Someday I will. It's waiting for me. It's waiting for me. So there you go. I already had that ready to go. Um, the next Blackbird um, thing I would like to talk about is the Blackbird Sampler Series for Christmas. The Christmas Sampler Series. Now, um, I tend to go to the um, Patricia Geary, G-E-A-R-Y, her website. Um, she has a big Blackbird website that has like all their charts listed. And she has the list of the Christmas series, which um, which is four patterns and possibly five, she said. <laughs> so um, the first pattern is uh, Merry Christmas, which I stitched. Oh my goodness. Boy, I'm falling apart today. I don't have it up here. You know what? My daughter's in the next room. I'm going to ask her to bring it up. Marguerite? Yeah? Can you do me a huge favor and go downstairs in the glass, um, 
the glass cabinet in the kitchen. On the top shelf, there's a little Christmas sampler in there that's framed. Can you bring it up for me and just hand it to me through the door? That way I don't have to stop the video again. She's so nice. Anyways, this is the first one in the series called Merry Christmas. It actually doesn't say anything on here, sampler series number one, but um, according to the Geary website, it's the number one. And um, it was put out in 20, 2012. Um, and I think the sub subsequent couple were put out in 2017. So I don't know, maybe it was an afterthought to do a Christmas series, um, but this one I do have stitched and my daughter will bring it up at night. So um, the next one uh, on the list that does say number two in the Christmas sampler series is Felice Navidad. Thank you, Marguerite. Thank you, Marguerite. That's okay. Okay. So here it is. Here's the Merry Christmas that I just showed you a minute ago over here. Oops, as things are falling off my lap. So here it is. This one um, I framed myself. I actually um, purchased the frame from a frame shop. So the frame was kind of custom made to this size. Uh, but I stretched this and... Um, and framed it and actually put my daughter's initials mn is her initials so uh someday uh this will be hers but it is super cute it's got a lot of uh, bright colors in the merry christmas which i think is kind of out of blackbird's wheelhouse but i i do like how it looks i love the green around the outside um which is more their color scheme as you can see i stitched this in 2020 so it's a couple years old but um I like the size too, you know, you know me, I like to finish things and uh, I love the smaller size of it. So I'm, I was super happy with this and eventually I want to have all of them stitched, but this is the only one I have stitched so far. So here's number one in the Sampler series. <laughs> so I was mentioning number two, which is Felice Navidad. I love these colors. I've seen so many people stitch this and it's absolutely amazing. So, um, this is on the Someday Blackbird list for me. Someday Blackbird list. And the next one is kind of exciting because I mentioned this on my last floss tube that one of these in the sampler series was going out of print. And um, this was the one that's gone out of print. And this is number three in the sampler series. Um, I believe this was from 2017. Yes, that last one was from 2017 too. And I don't know why this has never caught my eye, maybe because it hasn't been in the stores that I've, I've been in because now it's out of print, but I'm glad I was able to find it. And I will reveal that I found this at um, the store, the store in California, Alameda. What is the name of the store? I have it written down. Here's my paper. Uh, Needle and Haystack. Needle and Haystack. Um, I actually called her up and I asked her, I said, do you have this chart? And she seemed to think uh, from her, her computer program that she had four of them. So there's a possibility there might still be three there. So if somebody is a Blackbird fan and they want this chart that is now out of print and it's still at the regular price, um, I would call Needle and Haystack and see if they still have a couple left. Now, this to say, maybe some other stores have some, you know, in their previous stock. But what I've been told is that it is now out of print and it, the reds. Oh my gosh, I love those reds. Um, cannot wait. Cannot wait to stitch this one. Cannot wait. Um, and I, I just, I have to look at what this red is. Well, of course, I don't have my glasses on, but um, Cayenne, Weeks Dye Works. It is an awesome red. It just pops. Oh, I just love that. I just love that. So definitely on my someday list. And um, the last one in the series is the Christmas Rose. And I don't have that one. It is still in print. And so um, that's on my, my list of future acquisitions. <laughs> I'm slowly building my, my Blackbird. It's the only charts that I collect. But... Um, I do want to continue to build my Blackbird. Now, she also mentioned that her opinion um, was that there could be a fifth design in the series. And the chart she chose for the fifth design that she thought would fit, fit the bill is in the sister's book by Blackbird Designs. Um, 
I love this book. I have yet to stitch anything out of it, but again, on my someday list. And the, the pattern she thought might fit the bill is Peace and, Peace and Plenty, A Christmas Blessing. And um, certainly it does have a Christmas, obviously a Christmas sampler look to it. So here it is, and it is equally as beautiful. So there you go. Um, you could say it's, uh, you know, part of your own sampler, Christmas sampler series, uh, and group them all together. They would look awesome grouped together at Christmas time um, on a wall or in another type of display. But there you go. I don't know. Has anybody stitched this one? I don't think I, I tend to see this too frequently. I think I probably have seen it once or twice, but not too frequently. Uh, but it is beautiful, particularly if you like baskets. This is kind of a almost a basket sampler. <laughs> there is a bunch of flower baskets on there. And then um, that cute little tree and a very neat border. Three sides are the same and the bottom is different, which um, I think really really makes for a lot of visual interest. So fabulous, fabulous. Again, the sister's book, I do think this is still in print also. So um, feel free to uh, search the internet because I think you will find this one. And then I must mention that I did make one Blackbird design acquisition last time I was at Hobby House and that's their brand new book, brand new, um, When the Leaves Fall. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't, I have yet to purchase their last book, which I know was an autumn book and I'm blanking on the name of it and people have stitched a million things out of it and I have yet to acquire that book. So, so I got the most recent first, I have to go back and get the other. So that's on my list of future acquisitions for sure. So uh, again, slowly, slowly we build our, our collection and it's kind of fun, kind of fun to do it little by little. So uh, this, of course, has lots of beautiful designs in there. Look at that drum. Look at that sampler. Look at that. They made into a ditty bag. Uh, look at this other cool drum. There's a skinny pillow in there. And I think that's mounted on a box. So super, super cute book. Super cute book. Uh, definitely for all you black birdies out there, a must have. A must have. Okay, um, looking around, I'm feeling like I'm getting to the end. So um, last time I do want to mention, last time I mentioned I was starting um, Hands Across the Sea. And where is the book for that? Here it is. Here is the book for that. Um, this one is Sarah Fletcher. Now, here it is. It is an absolutely gorgeous pattern. And last time I was hyped up to start this for many reasons. One, it was gonna be my first kind of significant sampler using 100.3 uh, silks. Second, um, I was looking at getting a special kind of holder to hold my brand new Millennium Frame and getting my chance to use my Millennium Frame. So I was getting this holder uh, through, um, uh, the Lowry Company. Little did I know that Hobby House carries all the accessories. I had no idea. I was there just, this was, I don't know, a month, two months ago, just bopping around, looking through things. And all of a sudden on the floor, I saw all these accessories and I'm like, wait a minute. I think it's that holder I was going to order. They had it right there. Awesome. And one of my viewers, and I apologize, I forgot your name, um, said she used it, sent me pictures of it and said she loved it. So I went ahead and purchased I have it sitting over here. I don't know if you've been noticing it or not, but um, let me first show you before I go on to say any more. Oops, I'm gonna move my chair here a little bit so you can kind of see um, see the setup here. Let me bring it just a little bit. There we are. So you can kind of see the setup. So here is the Lowry stand and the arm of the Lowry stand. <clears throat> here, of course, is the Millennium Frame. And then it's this piece right here, this wooden piece with these two little clampy things that you put your, your frame on. Now, obviously you could use this with other frames. It doesn't have to be a, a, a Millennium frame, um, but you put that on there and then that clamps here. And so it keeps everything very, very secure, 
you know, this isn't going anywhere, very taut, you know, just awesome. So as far as this piece goes, I, I don't remember the name of it. Long, was it long frame something? I don't remember. But as far as this piece goes, I love it. This comes in two sizes, by the way. This is the smaller size. There is a bigger size, okay? So if you're interested, in, you have a Lowry and you want to try using a frame, um, you don't, again, doesn't have to be a Millennium. There's many different frame brands that you can get. Um, and you want to use it on your Lowry because without this, I kept trying to clamp in these circles, even using um, kind of this rubbery stuff and batting. And it, it just didn't, it wasn't stable. This makes it very stable. It's rock stable. So the whole setup, I love it. There's a butt in there. I know you, you feel it coming. I'm having a terrible time with the 100.3 silks. Now, this fabric is a 46 count, and I have to be honest, this is my first on 46. I am a 40 lover. And everybody kept saying, oh, jumping to 46 is not a big deal. It's taken some adjustments. I think I've probably adjusted to the 46 because it is very small. And, you know, I, I use magnifying clip-ons and stuff. I can see it fine. That That's kind of not the issue. That's not the issue. I think the issue is the silks. Um... These 100.3s, when I stitch with it, I pull it through and it's kind of loosey-goosey. And even though I give it a little tug, because I don't like super tight stitches, I like them to set on there just so. When I Even when I give it a tug, it like pops back up. Um, also, because it's so slippery, it's forever pulling out of my needle. And that drives me crazy. So um, I'm looking for some help. I know people just rave about the 100.3s. I guess I'm just not having the experience I wanted to have or expected to have or I really desire to have. So whatever advice you can give me, um, I have gone to, I tend to be the stitcher that does half, half, half and then goes back and does the other half. I've gotten away from doing that, which is my comfort zone. And I do each one separately. And I think that helps a little bit because before I'd go half, 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 and some would be loosey-goosey, some would be set down nicely, and I'd, I'd go back, and some of them would be crushed in there, and I didn't like that. So I, now I'm going to doing one X at a time, which has helped somewhat, but I don't know. I, it's not giving me the joy. <laughs> I'm not feeling the joy. So um, if somebody has some suggestions, I know you're going to ask what kind of needle I'm using. I have to be honest, I'm using a, a 28 count tapestry. I probably should be using one of those beading needles. Would that be more helpful? Maybe I should try that. I, I'll be honest with you, I can't find mine. I know it's here somewhere. As you can see, I have a hard time finding things. I know it's here somewhere. I probably should try that. Um, but I don't feel like that's going to say, um, I don't feel like that's going to solve the problem of this the silk where you pull it and then you go to your next stitch and it just kind of pops back because it's so slippery. I feel like it just keeps popping back and and not sitting on the fabric but being puffed out. Does that make sense to anybody out there who uses these? <laughs> um, please let me know. The pattern is beautiful. I would have expected to be way farther along than this, but number one, now it's hard for me to sit down and do it because I feel like I'm just going to get frustrated. So my motivation has gone way down. And, um, and then when I do do it, it's, it's just, it's not as fun. So I do it for a little while and then I watch TV or something. <laughs> so I haven't gotten as far as I would have want to. Um, I love the pattern. Don't get me wrong. I love the pattern. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's great. I'm still in love with it. Um, am I going to start over and use cottons? There's no way I'm going to do that. There's no way I'm going to do that. I will continue to push through because that's my personality. I just push through till the end. It's going to take me a lot longer than I expected because I have all these plans for New Year's. And um, this was going to be part of it, but I thought I was just going to be farther along. So it will continue to be part of it. And I will bring it into the new year and I will eventually finish it. But I think I'm going to shy away from being the monogamous stitcher that I usually am. And I'm going to delve into my abecedarian year of 2023 that I'm looking forward to doing with Carol, self-ox stitcher. And um, I will work on this um, and keep it 
keep it going slowly. I will. The other thing I wanted to point out was this beautiful bag that my friend um, Gail had gotten me. I showed it last time. And I have to say, it. Um, I love having my little 100.3s in here. Um, they're all kind of kind of set up here. I have two in each of these small pockets and three in this pocket. And it just kind of keeps them, keeps them together and organized. And um, I'm really enjoying this. So if you have a little, little bag like this, uh, it works well for the spools. Um, I do have to say one of my spools, and I'm very gentle with spools. Uh, one of them broke. Um, it was this green one. Yeah, the top broke off of it. Um, and I, I, I'm not a rough person with my stuff, but, um, I was just kind of popping it up a little bit and off it came. So, um, I don't know if this is a common problem that, that the spools break or not, but, um, I don't know. What am I saying? I keep saying, um, I'm feeling underwhelmed <laughs> with the 100.3s. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm saying. So I want to love them. Okay. I want to love them. So I'm looking forward to your comments on um, maybe how I could love them a little more. Okay. So uh, I think I might be at the end. Uh, my plans for the new year. Um, one thing on my radar, immediate radar, is my uh, Needlework Press Book of Days. I have some ideas. I want to prim it up a bit. So I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Two is my Blackbird Abyssidarian year that I'm looking forward to. And three is, um, everybody call, talks about one red thread before bed. Now, last time I mentioned I want to do, I want to have a red piece on the go. Will it always be a sampler? I don't know about that, but I want to have a little, little red piece on the, on the go. I'm looking forward to Laura doing a small sampler uh, whip parade or a small sampler parade because I want to do, um, I want it to be small, don't want it to be big, and I want it to be red. Um, but I'm not good in the evening. I do stitch in the evening, not every evening, but a lot of evenings, but I get super tired. So me doing one red thread before bed wouldn't go over because I would fall asleep after one X and that would be the end of it. So I tend to be a morning person. I tend to get up early. And so um, I have a new saying I'm going to throw out there, and it's going to be one red thread for the day ahead. <laughs> so I'm, for the new year, one of the things I'm going to try to incorporate, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try to incorporate um, a red piece in the morning where I'm putting in just one thread uh, for the day ahead. And we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know. Um... Other than that, the very last thing I'm going to mention, and I'm going to try to put a picture in here at the end, is um, going back to um, the Primitive Needle Arts Primer Retreat, uh, October 2023. Uh, I have gotten the a photograph of the first project um, that will be available to sign up for, and that's through Teresa Miller. A lot of people might not know her. She's in the prim world. Uh, she does uh, beautiful wool applique patterns. Um, she has also done a few cross stitch. She's been featured in the magazine, uh, Primitive, what is it? Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. She's been in there. So you've probably seen her there. Her husband makes these beautiful wooden pieces that she often incorporates to mount her things. And um, so she sent me a picture. She's going to be featuring embroidery. Now, if somebody out there has never done embroidery, me, uh, this would be a perfect opportunity to come and learn how to do embroidery and just try a very small project. Um, the project is absolutely gorgeous. It's mounted on a beautiful, beautiful wooden uh, box. Um, I'm going to put a picture in here. And um, I'm hoping that you might consider coming and learning how to do a few embroidery stitches. Uh, I know sometimes the cross stitch charts will um, add some little embroidery stitches in too. So I think it'd be very helpful and very fun. Very fun. So um, I, will, I will insert the picture here at the end so you can kind of see it uh, as a little sneak peek. So uh, that is it for today. Again, thank you so much. I know this is going to be a super long video. Um, thank you so, so much for joining me. 
Uh, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, uh, just overflowing with joy and love and peace and tranquility and stitching. Spend the day stitching. Wouldn't that be awesome? Mm -hmm. It would be. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the new year. Bye.